people that all they can talk about is video games and sports. You know what? I'm not saying you're bad because you like it, but do something else some of the time. It's so sick, all these self-propelled stomachs wandering around in their, in their football jerseys, acting tough. And Anyways, I'm ranting. Brian Tui is on the line with us. You've been hearing my rant the last 15 minutes, uh, Brian. Uh, uh, what's your take on the points I've been making? And yeah, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. Boil down the fraud you've discovered uh, as a sports fan, as a sports writer, and uh, you know why you've basically turned against uh, this unholy thing. Well, the big thing is, is that I found out that professional sports can legally fix their own games. They can fix their own outcomes, and they would want to do this because obviously you would give them more fan interest, you know, higher TV ratings, more ad revenue, and thus make them more profit. And that's the scary part. That's the part I think fans should really take away from all this is that there's no law protecting them from the professional sports leagues. And like you point out, there's really no oversight on the professional sports leagues either. I mean, the media didn't do anything really against Lance Armstrong and in a very real way, they still kind of protect him. And that's the same thing with professional sports. You look at the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, they're kind of protected by the sports media because in fact, the sports media funds them. I mean, the NFL makes nearly $6 billion a season from the likes of Fox, CBS, ESPN, and all these major networks. And NBA makes a couple million dollars a year from, or I should say billion dollars a year from ESPN. So are they really going to investigate these sports leagues? Are they going to really investigate the athletes when they know exposing such corruption would actually hurt their own bottom line? So they're kind of all in this together, and I think they're in this together to make money. And in a sense, if they have to dupe the fans to do so, they will. And that's what makes it a joke. It's a big gambling casino rigged to fleece idiots. And the public talks about the sports teams like it's them. Like, oh, Austin's so bummed out, we lost our seven Tour de France's. You didn't lose anything, you morons. Go ahead. Well, that's exactly right. The big thing is, is you hear this when you listen to sports radio. When fans call in, they'll say we as if they're part of the team. Well, you're not part of the team. You may be funding the team, you may be funding the league because you're giving them so much money and so much of your time. But the fact is, is that, you know, researchers and psychologists have studied this and they've shown that people do get some benefit from watching professional sports because it does release some of their anger, which is probably good for the government. And it's also, you know, it it's one of those things that makes up their personal identity. So when they're- No, no, it takes the tribalism that a man would use to be successful in business. You're supposed to be angry and warlike in business, not cheating, but focused. You're supposed to be focused in politics. You're supposed to be informed and know about all the ins and outs of government. Instead, you know all the ins and outs of the soap opera of, you know, what size jockstrap the, the, uh, the quarterback wears. Well, exactly. I'm sure there's guys, you know, in Chicago near where I live who could name the starting lineup of the 1984 Chicago Cubs, but they couldn't tell you who their alderman is, who their mayor is, who their senators are, any of that. I mean, I think even like last night you had the debates on, which were kind of a joke because you can't include a third party candidate at all in these because the Republicans, Democrats own the debates. But yet, how many people were instead watching, you know, Game 7 of the National League, you know, championship series? Or how many people are watching Monday Night Football as opposed to informing themselves maybe more about their own government? Sure. And I mean, again, it's one thing, you know, to, to, to pop a beer, watch a baseball game, but it's the mental illness of getting more and more obsessed. And it's the parallel in history that as societies collapse, they always get more and more into sports. It's just a major red flag. Well, and that's what the Romans did. I mean, they used the gladiator contest to distract the populace. And today, it's almost the same thing with, you know, the National Football League. They're almost the modern day gladiators. They're in publicly funded stadiums. They get tax, tax exempt status for having these stadiums. They're actually, the NFL has just revealed, they're actually a nonprofit organization. Not the teams, but the NFL, the core, the headquarters are a nonprofit organization. How is that possible when, like, their commissioner is making $10 million a year? You're getting $10 million a year to run a nonprofit organization? Is that something wrong there? Well, that's where all this is going. They teach Harvard courses for CEOs. Everything's going to be tax free foundations, and they're going to run all the businesses and really make profits, but then none of us are going to be allowed to be in that. We all pay taxes to give it to them. Well, exactly. And I think that's another thing that makes it kind of proves that the fact that these leagues can fix their own games where it may only benefit one team, but in effect benefits the entire league. The NFL shares 75 to 80 percent of all the revenue they take in. They take in nearly 10 billion dollars a season and most of that is distributed equally to all the teams. So if one team succeeds, if you have like Tim Tebow succeeding and millions of people are tuning in to watch Tebow and they're buying Tebow jerseys, well, that's not just profiting one team, it's profiting them all.
Well, it's just sad to see men, especially who, who don't have any life, any anything, anything they've conquered, any destiny. They're just these empty men who act tough all day and watch sports and think it's a manly to know all these details. Meanwhile, their kids' water they're drinking has a chemical weapon in it, and I have the White House science czar saying it's to hurt your child, and they don't care. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. We're going to show you some before and afters. Aaron, break down what happened, your story. I've worked really hard with diet and exercise to try to lose weight, but I just didn't get the results. It just didn't happen. Then I saw what you were doing with InfoWarsTeam.com. I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy. I wanted that nutrition. Didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. I want to challenge our radio listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com, sign up as a distributor, and get wholesale pricing discounts at InfoWarsTeam.com. Don Salazar was just down the street at Cabo Bob's here in Austin, Texas, and they were loving Homeland Security trucks, Transportation Security Administration. In their little blue uniforms, they're here to, here to run our lives, enjoy. Uh, so I guess the checkpoints they have in Dallas and Houston and San Antonio, I get to, you know, I get to see my little friends. I saw an ABC News article about the massive waves of theft by TSA. And then I was reading about police all over the country are now taking cash out of people's wallets that's even legal. Even if it's in the bank withdraw pack with the receipt they're taking it, uh, thousands of dollars. Um, and that's what the new, uh, the, they're not even regulations. Government's just saying, we're not letting you take after-tax money out of the country. No, you can't leave the U.S., your money stays here. And now they're saying they're not going to issue um, passports to most Americans. You're going to stay here, and we're going to rape you. <laughs> now go watch a football game and shut up. Shut up. Shut up and take it, scum. It's freedom. That drone's got a weapon system if you don't lick the boots of it. Now let's, let's go back to Brian Tuohy, author of The Fix is In, the showbiz manipulations of the NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, NASCAR, you name it. And again... You know about fixing and boxing, all of it. Uh, I want to ask him what he, from his research in the FBI files, what the most fixed stuff is, the, the, the numbers of billions we're talking about here, and the societally, this is obviously getting worse. Where is it going? Like forced sports viewing? I mean, how bad will the cult uh, of this situation get? Well, which question do you want me to answer first? You got the floor. Break it down. Okay. I mean, you know, your greatest hits of the loving fraud that all the schmucks and suckers and people love to toady around and be ripped off by the mafia that runs sports. Well, with the FBI files, for example, that I have, there's over 400 of them. And they cover investigations of violations of the Sports Bribery Act, which was passed in 1964 and basically makes it illegal for someone to pay someone else to fix the outcome of a game. And the files cover everything from horse racing to boxing to college football, college basketball, the NBA, the NFL, and Major League Baseball. And the scary thing is, is in 1999, which was the last time anybody did any sort of estimate on how much money is gambled illegally in the United States right now on sports, they estimate anywhere from $80 billion to $380 billion is wagered illegally each year on professional sports. Now this is nearly, even the low estimate, the conservative estimate of 80 billion is nearly four times the amount of money the NFL, NBA, National Hockey League, and Major League Baseball make combined. They made about $25 billion last year. Well, professional sports gamblers are betting more than that, maybe four times as much as that every year. So what's not to say that that money does not influence the outcome of the sports that we are watching because no one's monitoring for that money. No one's looking out for fixed games. The major media doesn't believe fixed games can happen, so they're not looking out for it. The sports leagues don't want to admit that it's possible that a game can be fixed, so they're completely ignoring it, even though 
They have their own security divisions, which are literally staffed with former members of the FBI, CIA, DEA, Secret Service, and local law enforcement. They don't reveal anything to, you know, actual law enforcement in terms of what's going on within their league. So the leagues aren't looking out for it. Sports gamblers are more apt to be the ones fixing the games because they're associated a lot of times with organized crime who run the illegal underground. And you've also got massive gambling by the players, the, the, uh, the refs, all of them. I mean, look at Pete Rose. This is well known. Well, exactly. And with Pete Rose and the thing that people a lot of times they give Pete Rose the benefit of the doubt because he was supposedly gambling on himself. Well, Pete wasn't gambling on 162 games that he played in for him on himself. A lot of times he was not betting on himself, which tipped off the other gamblers he was working with and the bookmakers that said, hey, maybe we should be get betting against Pete because he doesn't he doesn't even think he's going to win tonight. So, I mean, there's even so much gambling going on by the players, like you say, the referees, the coaches. No one's monitoring all this. And well, the men also seem to think it's so cool to gamble and it's so trendy. I mean, it's all a big joke. I mean, it's one thing if you go play poker with your buddies and bet a few dollars here and there. But, I mean, you know, this whole thing of this whole culture of gambling, I mean, it, it, it's, it's literally like begging to be a loser, begging to be a schmuck. Well, yeah, most, most gamblers do not win. And it's funny because you only have to win about 56% of your bets to be successful. But most people can't do that. The professionals who do do it, who can do it, literally work 70 to 80 hours a week, and they get what they call inside information, stuff that no one else gets about these games, about these athletes, because that's one of the things is people don't quite understand is that you think that your favorite athlete maybe get, wants to give 100% in every game. Well, that's not true. You don't know if he was out drinking the night before, if he you know, is getting divorced. You don't know what is going on in his private life. So you don't know what's really mentally going on. In yeah, but head. I mean, look at the guys with the pit bulls and everything. I mean, it's just it, 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 people think trashiness is cool nowadays. And so there's just a bottomless to it. I mean, looking at this from the outside, reading your book, undoubtedly things are getting worse quickly. How, how far will it go? Well, if you look around the world, and that's a lot of things American sports fans don't do, is if you look to soccer, you look to tennis, cricket, there's matches, matches being fixed constantly in countries all over this world by organized crime, by gamblers. Now, supposedly that's never touched our shores, but I don't believe that's the case. I believe it's going on now. It's just the fact is no one's looking for it. I mean, I'm about the only person in America, unfortunately, who's looking into this. The ESPNs, the Sports Illustrated to the world, they just ignore this as if it's not happening because they're being dictated to by well, the that they find. Remember six, seven, eight years ago, we heard this Lance Armstrong stuff and we're told we were conspiracy theorists. Not being a conspiracy theorist just means you're totally gullible and walk around in dark parking lots at night begging people to rob you. I mean, being a conspiracy theorist means you just don't believe what known liars tell you over and over again. It's like J. Edgar Hoover testified in the early 50s before Congress and said there was no such thing as organized crime or La Cosa Nostra. And then people still think organized crime is only Italian and that's a tiny part of it. It just shows the total naivete. Oh, I agree with you. I mean, I've been called the number one sports conspiracy theorist in America, and that's because I don't trust the leagues. I'm skeptical of the leagues, and that's the big thing I don't get with conspiracy theorists. I mean, why am I not the skeptic? Why are the skeptics the one who always attack the conspiracy theorists or the supposed to conspiracy Well, I mean, they want to keep the public sheep-like and gullible. I mean, But they're not the skeptics. That's the funny part. They're the ones who are just towing the line. The skeptics are the ones questioning why is the line there? Why is this the way it is? I mean, and that's what I'm doing. I'm questioning the major sports leagues and saying they're not telling the fans the entire truth of it. Explain to people the court rulings where the NFL, all of it, this is for entertainment purposes only. They say that. Uh, break that down for people. Well, the biggest thing, it came out of the Spygate scandal, which happened between the New England Patriots and a Jets fan. He sued the Patriots over this whole Spygate incident, um, which took place a few years back when those Patriots were videotaping the other team's coaching signals. And they went all the way to the Third Circuit Court of Appeals, and then the judge who ruled on the case said, your ticket, when you buy the ticket to a football game, basketball game, what have you, it even says on the tickets for entertainment purposes only, but your ticket only entitles you to see a football game, for example. It doesn't mean it has to be played by any certain rules, that any certain players have to appear, that those rules have to be followed, that a team can't cheat. It basically, the NFL provides you with a football game, they fulfilled their under the contract. So you couldn't even go after like the league for fraud for fixing games because the courts have already ruled that it's not fraud. It's just an entertainment product. You consume it, and that's the end of the story. What do you think about the whole Lance Armstrong thing? You heard my rant, but and I followed the case a little bit just because uh, it, uh, you know it deals with the fact that they like to burn the minion when it turns out from the witnesses that, that, that Armstrong and others were failing, but people up the chain were fixing it for him. 
Well, and the scary thing to me is that he's not alone. I mean, they know cycling has been, you know, rampant with performance enhancing drugs, but you know what? So are the NFL, so is the NBA, the NHL, all the major sports leagues are. And the thing is, the major leagues drug testing programs really are just PR campaigns. They don't care if the athletes are doing drugs. They don't care if they're doing cocaine or if they're doing steroids or what have you, as long as they perform, as long as they put on a show. And don't forget, performance enhancing drugs are going to actually improve the show that they're putting on. The leagues are good with it. They just have to have these programs in place so they can reassure the fans, oh, everything's good, everything's clean, don't worry about it, we got it taken care of. But I don't think that's the case. I think they know, in fact, I had a former, or actually say a current member of the Football Writers of America tell me on his radio program that at least 75% of the NFL, the players are doing HGH, human growth hormone. But at the time, the league wasn't testing for it, so it was free for them to do so, and the league knew it and they didn't care. And again, there's this idea of, well, everybody's corrupt. We're just going to do it. Once you get in that space, then the sky's the limit. Once you just give in to corruption completely, then it takes over society, points its finger at you and says, you're the extremist. You're the conspiracy theorist. You're the bad guy. And that's what we've now reached, not just in this, but in, in all the different corruption, where the Homeland Security says the people exposing the bad, we're the terrorists now. Oh, yeah, I'm sure I'm on a government watch list for the FBI files that I've requested just because they deal with professional sports. I mean, again, if the government is, to a certain extent, funding professional sports for the reasons you and I kind of think they are in terms of, you know, controlling the populace and making them distracted, then they're watching what I'm doing. And I know the leagues are watching what I'm doing as well because they're afraid I'm going to expose the fact that, you know, the emperor has no clothes on, that these games can be corrupted and are being corrupted. And no one's looking out for it. Well, that's the thing. It's inherently corrupt. It's inherently a joke. It's inherently bad. Uh, and uh, it's, it's totally sick. And it's been sold as healthy and good. It's a dirty joke. And I think everybody should just boycott professional sports. Uh, if you want to support your local teams, uh, college has even gotten corrupt, you know, your high school team, whatever. If your kids are in it or you're in the sports, I think it's healthy and great. But this whole narcissism, this obsession with it, all of it has gotten really nasty. Well, yeah, because you got to remember, they don't put the games on just for fun. I mean, they put on college games, and they put on the professional games to sell you things. They put it on for advertising. That's why it exists. And one of the reasons why it's so highly sought after by the networks is because it's really one of the few things that still goes on live that people have to watch while it's going on if they want to know the results. Not many people record sporting events to watch them later. They have to watch them now. They have to know what's going on now as opposed to all the other TV. Yeah, it's, made, it's there to waste your time. Uh, how much, because uh, I mean, I see numbers of $5 billion in the last few years on sports stadiums. How much is, are, are taxpayers fitting the bill for, for all these disgusting uh, parasitic sports teams? I couldn't tell you an exact number, but it's interesting to note that, you know, many economists who have studied the impact of these stadiums on cities have said that sports stadiums do absolutely nothing for a city's economy. I mean, as soon as like the Colts left Baltimore, you know, the city of Baltimore didn't fall apart. In fact, it actually stepped up. It got better because they had entertainment money that was being spent on the Colts instead went to other local things, local theater, local music and that sort of thing. Oh, so yeah. it doesn't really help a city to have a major league sports league team. It just is, it's kind of a mental thing. It's people want it. They want to be able to identify with it for whatever no, reason. that's their oh, ego. That's their accomplishment is to go watch a bunch of drug addicts and have TSA trained goons grow up their family and then be overcharged and yelled at and tasered for no reason. And they and they bring a little girl in Michigan. A, a, they order a lemonade. They bring an alcoholic lemonade. She doesn't even drink it, but they still arrest the dad and CPS the kid. You're just asking to be abused in a giant, disgusting mafia operation. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a scary thing what's going on with professional sports today because there is so much money involved and there's so much money on the line for these people that they don't want to let it go. And that's why I think they're willing to manipulate the outcome of their own games because they have to keep increasing things. They have to keep upping the stakes, upping the ante, making more people watch, almost compelling more people to watch. And that's why I don't think they can just leave it up to chance. I mean, I ask people, would you leave a multi-billion dollar industry up to chance, especially when you don't have to? Because, I mean, if you took like McDonald's, for example, and McDonald's had the ability to manipulate and control the taste of their food while you consumed it to make it more appealing to you, they would do that. Well, professional sports leagues can do the exact same thing. They can alter the game. They can manipulate the game while you're consuming it, while you're watching it, and make it better, make it more enjoyable.
And so why do people think they don't do that? No, it's all ridiculous. I, I want to go to some phone calls. Everybody should get this book and give it to your sport zombie friends. The fix is in, InfoWarsStore.com. Let's go to Chris in Florida. Chris, you're on the air for a question for our guest. Go ahead. Thank you. Hey, Alex. Hey, Brian. Um, when I was uh, younger, I went and I saw the, the Bulls uh, at the hotel before the game because I was a huge fan, and um, I was real innocent, and I, I wanted to meet the players. And I actually saw some uh, escorts getting uh, sent up to the rooms, and uh, I saw some of the players walking with the girls a few feet behind them. And, um, you know, I innocently was trying to ask for autographs and snap pictures, so I have these pictures of them with the girls, so I'm not just, you know, rumoring this. And, um, you know, a lot of my illusions were shattered after that. And, uh, well, well, I mean, you know, yeah, obviously uh, prostitution is ubiquitous in sports, yeah. But but the question I wanted to ask, Brian, was, um, uh, you know, like with the whole Kobe Bryant thing and uh, in Colorado and then how they just want to let him go back and play. Do you think that they like kind of like send people to set these guys up so they can tell? Oh, absolutely. Or? Brian, talk about that. Oh, absolutely. I have a video that I got actually from the FBI through the Freedom of Information Act. And it was a video they used to show to the players to warn them about being corrupted and getting, you know, sucked into, you know, game fixing schemes. And one of the things they mentioned was the fact that these guys will use women to lure these guys into these plots. So, I mean, it's very easy to use, you know, women use prostitutes to get them. And they say, we're going to tell your wives the same way they get politicians. Have you put that video out yet, brother? No, I haven't. I just recently got it. Hey, hey, I hey. You ought to, hey, if you want to, I would love to have you on and premiere that and get it out as a big story. Or, I'm sure you can do it somewhere else, but that, uh, those training videos, I got to see that. That that would be dynamite. Because here they are saying there's no fixing, but they're showing them videos going, here's how you get set up. Well, that's the really interesting part of it is because they're talking about things that's never come out in the public. But they're obviously showing, and it's only meant to be shown to the athletes. Hey, listen, I wouldn't sit on that too long and get that out quick. No. No, I plan on doing something with it very soon because it is. It's really interesting because people don't think games have been fixed, and yet they're talking openly about games that have been fixed. No, no, that, that, that is bombshell that you got yeah. that. Uh, okay, caller, I think that answers your question. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's talk to Eddie in Wisconsin. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, it's Edie. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Um, I had a couple of comments. One kind of went back to your earlier discussion about um, – candidates and the debates and squandering power and the other has to do with the sports situation. I'll go with the sports one first. Um, and that is, um, I guess I'm wondering exactly what the proof is as far as it being fixed. And then the other thing I was wondering about for quite a while, there was a big association in commercials and things like that um, combining sort of a gang lifestyle with sports. And then we ended up with all these gangs, you know, getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, no, no, they're selling that to ruin the kids. They're, they're piggybacking destructive. I've talked to high-level people that were there with MTV when they said in the mid-'90s, we're going to push gangster rap to, you know, to wreck people. That's how this works. They want a dumbed-down culture so the kids act like gang members and the cops are trying to put them in prison. Uh, can you comment on that, Brian? Well, I'll go back to what she asked me about the proof of this. And the proof, the hard part with proof is the FBI investigated, like I said, I have over 400 files of them investigating fixed games and fixed horse races and boxing matches. And they had an extremely hard time proving these things because you can watch the game film of a particular game and you can't tell if a quarterback threw an interception, for example, on purpose or if he just threw an interception. I mean, that's the way things go. These things are very hard to prove because there is no concrete evidence of them. But that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. I yeah, mean, I mean, I mean there, are, there are a lot of documented cases. They always say it was an individual player did it for themselves. But the point is they show them training videos saying don't get set up to fix games. It's, it's been proven fixed all over the world. We're just the most naive people on the planet. Um, I agree with you. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Some of the biggest problems facing our society are the video game heads, the sports heads. People really aren't living. They're just watching a television. They're watching a game. And then it's all got messages that are destructive on purpose. Because we have a criminal elite running the architecture of the world right now. And they see you as dumb animals, so they're putting out propaganda to make you become what they say you are. And
and you know they sell that sports is so wholesome and good. It's not. Professional sports is sick, and it's empty, and it's not fulfilling anybody, and it's riddled with fraud and the TSA groping you and troops of the Kentucky Derby searching people. All of it is just used to sell a fraud. It's it's like the Running Man. We're gonna take a few more calls here. Uh, we were talking to. Um, a caller in Wisconsin, and she was um, bringing up points. What was your point about the Constitution, ma'am? I was just going to say it's going back to your earlier conversation about the candidates. Um, all of us, you know, so many of us feel very upset by only being given the choice of Romney or Obama. And what I'm wondering at this point, um, you're talking about squandering power, and I think all these, you know, I listen to Sons of Liberty Radio and different programs. And I guess what I'm wondering is, why aren't we using our platform? I mean, MoveOn.org has certainly done enough of it to promote the Constitution Party candidate, Virgil Good, because he is on, I think, just about every state's ballot now. And to me, it's a better choice than any. Sure, sure. Else. How they get us is the lesser of two evils, and I appreciate your call where just like the two parties are subsidized, uh, just like sports is subsidized, they make it such a big spectacle that then the third party is such a shide show. People go, well, there's not much difference, but you know, I like Romney or I like Obama. Do you have any comments with sports analogies tied into politics uh, here, Brian? Well, I think one of the interesting things is one of the other things I've studied is continuity of government programs and national emergencies. I actually wrote a book on it I haven't had published yet. And, um, they, you know, people say, well, that's impossible. You know, the government can't round you up and that sort of thing. Well, they can. They just haven't done it yet. They could do it tomorrow. And it's the same with, you know, professional sports. You know, people don't think a game can be fixed, but you know what? It could be fixed this Sunday. It could be fixed tomorrow. It can happen. It's just a question of whether they will do it and how often they do it. But there's things out there that can be done by these leagues and they can be done by our government that people just don't want to believe is possible. It's funny you raise that. Um, NCOG, sports stadiums are where they first round everybody up and then process who goes to a camp, who goes to forced labor. That's all on record. The sports stadiums are actually the giant government takeover centers. Well, and they're supposed to be able to, if, you, if your stadium is funded by public money, they're supposed to even house the indigents like when they're not playing games. But I mean, you know, is our digging allows, you know, a bunch of homeless people to wander into like Soldier Field in Chicago when they spent, you know, five hundred million dollars renovating it just to take care of them? I don't think so. But yeah, you're right. They can they'll use those places when and if they need to. Oh, you saw what happened at the Superdome. They wouldn't let people walk out of New Orleans. They made them go there and then the cops wouldn't go protect people. And the troops sat there for six, seven days on giant piles of food and water and were ordered, don't help anyone just to see what would happen. Yeah. <laughs> And then they destroyed the Superdome, the inside of the Superdome, and then public money had to be spent to, you know, re-bring it back to a state where they could play a football game. And then the NFL took all the credit for bringing back New Orleans, which I just don't believe. And now government is going to run health care the way they've run everything else. It is going to be a nightmare. It's been a nightmare everywhere else government runs things. I'm going to do five more minutes with you and take a few more calls sure. from Courtney. Uh, uh, Edie, thank you for your call. Those were good questions. And a few others. Uh, here on the other side. Uh, but the book is The Fix is In, The Show Miz Manipulation of Major Sports. Brian Toohey is our guest. It's available at InfoWarsStore.com. Brian Toohey's our guest. A few more phone calls. He wrote The Fix is In. And uh, Brian, get in touch with us if you'd like to um, come on the nightly news or something and play excerpts of, that, of the uh, FBI training video for professional athletes of how to not get set up by sex operatives to then fix games because you know i went right to the heart of the matter you noticed i mean i get what you're saying this is proving that they know that this is going on oh exactly and that's the thing that's so shocking about this video is they say you know the nfl has never had a game fixed ever in its 90-year history well you know what in this video it seems to indicate that that's a complete and utter lie well of course there's been players or refs or people that have tried to throw in things when there's billions every year being embedded just on the NFL alone. What, what, it's, it, how much is it every year from the NFL? It's some giant number. Well, they say anywhere from $1 to $4 billion a week on NFL games alone. 
But again, I said it's 80 to $380 billion a year on illegal sports gambling. And you remember, that's all really going to organized crime. It's incredible. You know, if I go cash a $1,000 check, the bank acts like I'm Al Qaeda or Al Capone. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, the big mega banks on record just run the drug aircraft, ship their money out. The Wall Street Journal reported yesterday, middle class, you know, wealthy people that have a few million dollars trying to move to Switzerland with post-tax money. Uh, the, the, the government says you, you can't leave. There's no law. They just won't let you leave because the banks run America and they don't want that money leaving. I mean, this is getting creepy, man, when you can't even get out of this country. Oh, yeah. Let's go to a caller here. I want to talk to you after the uh, here in the break. Uh, Courtney in Canada, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, hi, Alex, and also hi, Brian. I just wanted to thank both of you, and especially Alex, for standing up for the truth, even at times when you had to stand alone. Um, and also being such a strong influence on Twitter, I have actually two questions. Uh, the first question, uh, hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Uh, is regarding uh, with everything that's going on and um, because it's all tied together right and uh, sports just like uh, politics um, you know it's to control the people and regarding the way that especially Obama was being mockingly yesterday about technology and new uh, different things are you worried that because everything is is in the digital age and moving towards an even more digital age uh, companies like rare chip and um, for instance, on your iPad and everything, everything is with touch now. How that's going to affect the sports industry in regards to this will become some sort of uh, thing that will be obligated in order to enjoy or not to enjoy. I don't personally enjoy it, but for the people who are, are kind of hooked at this moment, they're going to have to take They're going to have to thumbprint and stuff, just like Verichip makes you get chips to go in these uh, Baja Beach clubs. Yes, they're they're going to force more and more police state stuff as a beta test on the sports zombies, knowing the sports addicts will do anything, including feed their children into meat grinders. Uh, probably if they told them to. Uh, comments on that, Brian? Well, I think you're right. I think in a lot of ways that they are just like I say, they're just trying to suck more and more people into this sports thing, and they're now they're bringing in more sports. They're bringing in. Like the known corrupt sports of soccer, especially like in Italy, they're feeding those broadcasts live into American homes now, even though they know that those games have been outright fixed. I mean, it's public knowledge in Italy, but here no one knows, but they'll keep showing them here because it's getting more and more people to watch sports. Yeah, but I mean, it's like well known that Don King has fixed matches. I mean, the guys have, you know, <laughs> been arrested for murder and stuff. But, I mean, people kind of figured that out about professional boxing. It's not as big as it used to be. Does the whole spectacle of sports endanger itself uh, as more of the corruption comes out? No, I don't think so, because you can look at professional wrestling, which, you know, many people know is scripted and basically fixed. No. And, yeah. And You're they, not a conspiracy they, theorist, are you? It's real. Oh, well, but you get people who, <laughs> you know, pay hundreds of dollars for these pay-per-view events and big tickets to go see these things. Well, you know, they don't care. Oh, I know. I know lots of adults that say it's real. Oh, yeah. But then <laughs> you, look at, you look at, you know, mixed martial arts now in the UFC, it's very comparable to boxing. And we know boxing's been fixed. I mean, look at the picture behind me. I mean, it goes back, you know, 120 years that we know boxing has been fixed. But, you know, people don't think the UFC can be fixed. Are you crazy? Of course you could fix a match in there. I mean, it's very easy. You need one guy, and it's done. Amazing. The book, The Fix is In. The Fix is In on so many fronts. Wake up, stop being naive, and we can turn this around. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.